Wishing a good eve to the creepies and crawlies Shrieking a melody Hey friend, Chris here from WhyLogicProRules.com. In this first video in our three-part series all about the amazing Symphony desktop interface from Apogee, we're going to record some vocals into a Logic Pro project and how to get set up with all of the amazing innovations of this interface. All right, so we have our recording session here. We're going to be recording some rap vocals or hip hop vocals into this session. The project is made up entirely of software instrument tracks. So software, drums, bass, keys, etc. All right, so all we have to do now is create a track to record our vocals. I do have a vocal track already in this project, but let's just delete it and create a new audio track. We're gonna select analog input one for the audio input. This is the first input on the Symphony desktop interface. We're gonna click OK. And from here, we're going to instantiate the included Apogee channel effects plugin on the vocal channel that we plan to record to. To me, this is the linchpin of the entire Symphony desktop workflow. With the Apogee channel effects plugin, you are able to control every aspect of the analog input and optical inputs from this plugin window. So from adjusting the preamp gain to choosing between the different preamps to instantiating the different DSP plugins in the print path or monitor path, turning on phantom power, adjusting the monitor level for the vocalist. I mean, literally everything about the input you can control from this plugin. And all you have to do is go down to the channel link option at the bottom of the plugin window and select the appropriate analog or optical input. In this case, we're analog input one. So we're going to choose that and we can see that every single aspect of the input is fully accessible to us from the plugin window. Okay, so let's turn on phantom power for our microphone for our vocalist. And I'm gonna do this from the interface, but you can do it just as easily from the plugin. And we can see that the change to the phantom power is reflected in the plugin. Let's also drive up some preamp gain for our vocalist. I'm gonna do this again from the interface, but we'll see this change affected in the plugin. And thanks to the alloy preamp technology of the Symphony desktop, we have multiple preamps to choose from. The literal DSP and hardware circuitry adapts to model these different types of preamps. The first one we're going to choose is the pristine, clean, transparent flagship Symphony preamp. That is part of the flagship series Symphony interfaces from Apogee. Next, let's dial up the headphones for both myself and for the vocalist that we're going to be recording. We can just page through the different pages on the interface, unmute each headphone just by clicking on the headphone ring and clicking on the mute button next to that ring on the touchscreen, and then adjust the volume of each headphone output just by clicking on the headphone ring again and adjusting with the knob next to the touchscreen. Okay, let's try to see if the vocalist can hear himself in his headphones. Try talking a little. Okay, so our vocalist can't hear himself. I can't hear him either. What we need to do is we need to change the source which is feeding the headphone outputs. We're gonna change this from just the main outputs to that of the software mixer. And we can just page through the different options on the interface itself. I'm gonna select each headphone, page through to the next page, and then select from the drop-down assignment menu, mixer one for each headphone output. So the sound from the project and the direct sound from the microphone will be fed to each headphone without any latency. Try it again. Check, check, check. Hey. Cool, so we're ready to record. Again, we are not using the software monitoring in Logic Pro. We're listening to the direct monitoring from the interface itself. Of course, you're probably asking yourself, why not just use the software monitoring in Logic Pro? It's easier, it's faster. I wanna show you some of the discrepancies that can crop up when using software monitoring. So before we dig into preamps or DSP plugins or any of that stuff, let's go back to the audio preferences. We're going to enable software monitoring and turn off the direct monitoring on the Symphony desktop from the channel effects plugin. All we have to do is navigate to the mixer one tab in the plugin and just bring that fader all the way down to turn off the direct monitoring to the headphones. Let's turn on software monitoring and let's see if we can hear Ben. We should be able to, albeit there'll be a bit of latency or delay in the recording. Let's take a listen. Check. Check. Hey. hey. Okay, so that's gonna be a problem. Obviously we wouldn't have the IO buffer size set to 1024 for recording. So let's set it to something more reasonable like 128. We're gonna take a listen to what Ben sounds like at 128 and we're hearing both the direct signal and the recorded signal at the same time. So you can kind of get a sense of what Ben and I are hearing in our headphones. Okay, give it another try. Check, check, check. check. Hey. hey. Okay, better, but not ideal to Ben. He can still hear a tiny bit of latency. It's, you know, it's distracting. So at this point, we would probably turn on low latency monitoring in Logic Pro to remove all latency. Give it a try, Ben. Check, check, check. check. Hey. 
Okay, so we're hearing the direct signal and the recorded signal, but it's good enough for Ben. The problem is, is once we want to start introducing plugins in the mix, especially latency inducing plugins, we can run into problems yet again with latency and other issues. So I'm going to load up Neutron from Isotope, and I'm just going to load a preset that seems applicable to the type of vocals we're going to be recording. Here, Ben, try talking. Check, check. 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 Hey. hey. Okay, so we're still hearing latency. If we turn off and turn back on low latency monitoring mode in Logic Pro, now Neutron has been turned off. So we can't use the effects we wanted to to help the vocalist sound like he's in the mix, sounding a bit more mixed for the song, which is why we're going to use the direct monitoring from the interface itself, the Symphony Desktop. I'm going to change all my settings back, and then we'll dig into the different preamps on this interface. Cool, so I've changed everything back. We're ready to record some vocals using the pristine Symphony MP preamp. Let's try recording the first chorus, the first verse, and then we'll switch between the different preamps so we can hear each one in the mix. Here we go. On the way up, tucked in the fringe of the rug, resting on the love, your imperfections. When you get there, no rush, find a way in the wall, touch, reason to believe in the present. What's Wishing a good... Cool, let's check out the AP57 preamp now, which is based off of an Ampex 601 tube preamp, a preamp from the 50s that has a lot of character to it. Of course, I'm accessing all of these preamp controls from the plugin on my Mac, but you could do this either way. You could access the preamp tab and adjust the preamps from the plugin or from the interface itself. So let's do that right now. I'm just going to click on the input itself, the input ring on the interface. I'm going to page through the different options, you just slide to the left or to the right, and we're going to click on the preamp tab to select between the three different preamps. And when I choose the AP57, you can see it's updated in the plugin as well on my Mac. I'm gonna stick with the plugin controls and let's gain stage the AP57 for our vocalist. So Ben, do you mind giving me something again? Check, 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 hey, check, check, check. All right, you can hear already the AP57 has a bit more bite to it. Let's gain link the controls and start driving into the preamp a little harder. Check, check, check. Hey, check, check. One, two, check. Cool. If you're digging the AP57 but wish you had a bit more headroom, there is a DB pad that you can switch on, which will give you a little more space before you get into all of that gritty character of the AP57. So let's try gain staging again with the DB pad enabled. Check, check. check. Hey, check, one, two, check, check, check. Okay, let's stick with that. We'll have a little more character to this vocal pass. And let's try recording. On the way up, tucked in the fringe of the rug. Resting on all of your imperfections. When you get there, no rush. Find a way in the wall. Touch reason to believe in the present was Cool. So I'm set on the AP66 preamp for this vocalist, for this song, for this microphone. And at this point, let's introduce some zero latency plugins for printing or monitoring through for our vocalist. Because again, the Symphony Desktop comes with a full suite of DSP plugins that you can print to tape, so to speak, into the DAW or just monitor through. And you can control and access all of these plugins from the interface, from the control app, and from the channel effects plugin in the DAW. So let's start out with print effects. Now, I myself am not at all confident that any effect I want to choose right now to print is the one that I'm going to want to stick with forever for the rest of eternity. But I would be comfortable with setting up a high pass with the mod EQ just to clean up anything at the bottom of this vocal track. And as with anything with the Symphony Desktop, we can adjust the controls on the mod EQ either from the interface itself or the plugin in the DAW or the control app that is a separate application. Let's take a look at the input on the interface itself for input one. And you can see that the print effects is enabled on the interface as well. All of these aspects of the Symphony desktop are one and the same. They all control the same controls from different angles. If we click on the print effects, we can see the mod EQ is in the print effects path. So let's click on the mod EQ so we can view it on the interface. And we have our choice between a 6 dB per octave or 12 dB per octave for the slope of the high-pass filter. 
Let's click on the frequency slider on the interface and we'll start to adjust the high pass filter and send it further up the scale using the knob on the interface itself. All right, I think that's a safe place to put the high pass filter. It won't impact the low end of our vocalist in any negative way. Let's now move over to the monitor effect so we can give our vocalist some EQ, compression, saturation, so that his voice sounds good to him in his own headphones, but also so that he sits well in the mix itself. For this, I'm going to use the ECS channel strip, which comes as both a DSP plugin and a native plugin that you can just run in Logic without the hardware itself. Great for just easy EQing, compression, saturation, help glue a track into a mix. So let's drive down the threshold on the compressor. I'll also click on the monitor tab in the plugin so we can see any changes I make on the interface are reflected in the plugin as well. Okay, let's take a listen to that. Check, check, check. Hey, one, two. Okay, I feel like that maybe the preamp is being driven a little too hard, so I'm going to actually adjust the input gain into the preamp. And then let's go back to the ECS channel strip to add some saturation or drive. I'm also going to make some EQ adjustments. So we're going to add a little bit of top end at 5K, about a dB or so. And also right around 250 hertz. I know from experience of working with this vocalist, this microphone, I, something I just want to tuck down a little bit by about a dB or so. Okay, Ben, do you mind just talking a little bit? Check, check. Hey. All right, let's try tracking with these print and monitor effects instantiated, and then we'll listen back and do a comparison. On the way up, tucked in the fringe of the rug, resting on all of your imperfections. When you get there, no rush, find a way in the wall, touch reason to believe in the present. What's that? Wishing a good eve to the creepies and crawlies. Okay, so we have our updated take. The print effects have been committed to the take itself. So this high pass filter is part of the recording that we have recorded. So we don't have to high pass again if we don't feel like it. And the monitor effects are not just there for us to listen while we're recording, but also while we listen back to the recording in the session. So all those shenanigans of having to juggle a separate software mixer with effects and you don't have to do any of that. The DSP effects run off of the interface yet you can fully control and hear them from within the DAW. It is so awesome. And just so you can be absolutely sure, let's try listening back to the verse of this song and I'll disable, I'll bypass and then re-enable the monitoring effect plugin so you can hear and see that they're being disabled and re-enabled from within Logic Pro. Nothing is as it seems. What's in store for the busted cardboard box dreams? Every lock click has its meaning. Cracked all resolution unleashing. How yeah, how was on three? Rocking the sound of the knob, twist and knee creaks. And there you have it. This, in my opinion, is the closest to an analog workflow in the digital domain that exists. And Apache makes sure that this workflow works for you, whether it's to work from the interface or from a plugin inside your DAW or from the control app. And if you decide later that you want to take your session out of the studio and on the road, you can. Because if you purchase and own the native versions of these plugins, you don't have to be connected to the interface at all. The channel effects plugins will revert to the native instances of those plugins so that you can work on your project with those plugins anywhere you wish. Cool. So in the next video, I'll show you how to get set up with the optical inputs for multi-track recording and how you can use the DSP effects on the optical inputs as well to print or to monitor through. See you for more in the next video.